So the way condenser microphones work is uh, they have a, a capsule that is the transducer. This is the thing that actually picks up the sound. And then behind that, there's a, a circuit that does some processing to that audio signal. Um, so there's components to the capsule, and it's a little hard to see here because it's kind of all the same color. Um, but there's a piece of brass right here called the back plate. And then on both sides of that piece of brass, there's another metal plate. Technically, it's a metal plate. Practically speaking, it's actually a piece of very, very thin plastic, um, mylar or polyester, that's been painted with metal, typically gold, because gold doesn't corrode. Um, but functionally speaking, it's, th there's, there's a series of three metal plates. Um, and why that's, why that's important is because when you have metal plates um, and then you pass uh, voltage into it, it makes a capacitor. And that's why these are sometimes called capacitor microphones. Technically speaking, this is a capacitor. It's also called a condenser capsule. Um, so uh, the way it works is when sound hits that thin piece of plastic film called the diaphragm, it vibrates and that changes the size of the gap between the diaphragm and the back plate. And as that gap changes size, um, that creates a voltage. It, you know, it creates a voltage that can be read off as an audio signal. So some of the sonic effects that follow from the design of a condenser mic system. Um, well, there is a circuit, so it requires phantom power. Okay, so you have to give it voltage uh, to run the circuit. In most cases, you have to give it voltage to run the capsule as well. Um, that capsule, the ones that you've seen pictures of here, it doesn't work unless you're pumping voltage into it. Okay, so typically at least 40 volts, sometimes as high as, as 80. That tends to be the operating range for most familiar microphones. There's another type of condenser mic called the electric mic, which is sometimes also called uh, uh, permanently charged. Um, and those use uh, special types of plastics that have a, basically a permanent charge applied. Um, and uh, that type of design had a bad name in the early days because the charge would wear off and after a couple of years your microphone would stop working. And they've, they've kind of mastered that now, those last a long time. And a lot of the inexpensive microphones on the market do tend to be electrodes. But even those require voltage for the circuit. So you, you can't get away from this. You're either going to have a battery or phantom power or, or some other power supply, like a tube microphone would have a, its own dedicated power supply because it's looking for 120 plus volts in most cases. Um, so they require power. Um, they can overload or distort due to high SPL. Okay, so these circuits are designed to work within a range of uh, audio signal levels. And if you overload it, you'll hear crackly distortion. Um, you know, and that would typically be the sign that you reach for a different microphone, right? If you're overloading that mic, um, you know, move, the, move the microphone further away from the source or reach for a ribbon or a, or a moving coil dynamic. Um, condenser mics, they're capable of high output and low noise. Um, they capture extended frequency response with good detail. So these are the reasons why they're so common in studios because you're not limited to a frequency range and you get a crazy amount of detail. And that's true even if, you know, if you're recording guitar, electric guitar all day long, you know, typical electric guitar recording recipe, uh, the guitar plugs into um, the amplifier, amplifier plugs into the cabinet, which has the speaker in it, and then you shove an SM57 up against the grill cloth. Okay, it's been done a million times, it sounds great. And yet if you replace that dynamic with a condenser mic, chances are you'll say, oh my God, I get so much more detail. Like I didn't know there was that much detail in my electric guitar until I tried a condenser. And that goes back to how these things are made. The condenser is capable of picking up more detail because it doesn't have this giant, relatively high mass voice coil. It has to get moved by high frequency energy that just doesn't happen in a, in a dynamic mic. Um, now because they don't, because condenser mics do have high output, they tend not to need a really pristine signal path. So what does that mean? If you're recording, uh, you know, a, a brass band from four feet away uh, or a trumpet from one foot away or the space shuttle launch from anywhere in the state of Florida, you don't need a pristine signal path. You have so much signal that your preamp is going to be turned all the way down. All right, so it doesn't matter what preamp you have. It's got plenty of gain for a hugely loud source.